Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today we've got a little bit of a sort of, I don't know if you'd call it a shootout, but, may, but maybe an option of getting something similar to this Seiko we have here, the Speed Timer Solar Chrono, but on the cheap. And with this watch here, the Forzo Enduro Timer. And it'll be interesting to see what you guys think of the two watches and the kind of differences and similarities of the two models. Now, this watch here is one of Seiko's current range, and I've got it in for review off Francis and Gay. So, a quick shout out to Francis and Gay for allowing me to um, actually uh, borrow this watch for the review. But this is. Forzo's basically Enduro Timer. It's a it's a watch available now. The price point of this watch is around about five hundred ninety pounds, and the price point of this one here, I believe, is four hundred. But quite often they have a sale, which drops it down to about three hundred pounds. Now, obviously, they're both Chrono models, but on here we have a Solar Power Chrono, and it is actually very nice. Um, very nice movement, no problem with it. But this is actually a Seiko movement also. This is a VK63, but this isn't a solar um, version. Both feature like mega quartz. If I start both watches, well, actually, actually yeah, go on, we'll start both. And you can see the way the second hand ticks over on both watches. It is actually a really nice, satisfying kind of... Um, far better than you know mega quartz i prefer it so much more to quartz because otherwise you'd be seeing the actual hands just tick around it and i don't like that so as for the actual function of the stopwatch it's i can't really put one over the other but one interesting point if i stop both watches when you actually press this you get an audible click and now I do prefer that on the Forzo. If I actually reset, this is where the Seiko gets back to it. If I reset this, snaps back really, really fast and precise. Where if I press this on the Seiko, if I do this now, that second hand just glides back. And I love that. I think that looks really kind of cool. But back to other features. When you look at this, it's got a very clear lovely what it just looks so crystal clear to look at but look at this watch if you look at it is it just me or does it seem always in shadow it's almost like the glass has a slight smoke effect to it it just it it's always a little bit harder to read this model but yeah you know, horses for courses you know one of those things the date on this is reset quite far back as you can see there it's actually why you can see it's actually quite hard to read because it is set so back on the Forzo. It has that lovely round marker there and is easy to read. I believe the reason for that is probably because of the solar panels, which these three subdials actually are. So, it you know, both have loom. Um, it's not particularly strong on either model. Um, the difference is the Seiko has loom on 12, 3, 6 and 9 hour markers, whereas this one doesn't, only on the hands. But to me, I prefer the face of this one. If we see here, it's 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 a nice face. There's no ifs or buts about it. It's just the Forzo, I think it just looks kind of a bit more clear concise and really well done i love the texture of that dial i think it is superb plus another thing to point out is this watch looks bigger technically it is it's one millimeter bigger but because of this big um bezel with a tachometer on there it makes the dial of the watch look a lot smaller where on this watch the tachometer is built in to the actual dial so it makes the watch physically well optically look bigger but really is only one millimeter. So there you go. Now, crystal wise, I love the AR coat. Like you can see the AR really, you know, light up blue. And I do like this chamfer they put onto the sapphire crystal, where the Seiko is completely different. Both are sapphire crystals, but I must admit, I I do like the way it magnifies 
the hands there. So you can see it magnifying, so it's a domed crystal versus this one, which is flat. So tough one to call it, but yeah, it's either way. Both watches, I should point out, are also um, water resistant to 100 meters. Case design, the case of a Seiko, um, no problems with it really. I do have a bugbear when it comes to the bracelet as it simply doesn't match the um, case at all. We have this big rounded um, end link there and a very sharp, um, what do you call it, case. And they simply don't match. Um, it looks like they've got the bracelet off a different watch and fitted it to this, which is a little bit of a shame versus the Enduro where they've done actually quite a nice job of blending that in. These are solid end links also. It is, um, does have drilled lugs. I, to be fair, I don't normally wear this on the bracelet. I only put it on for the video. I normally wear this on a brown leather strap, which I think looks really good. Now, for pushers, we do have a signed uh, pusher on this. Uh, sorry, a crown, signed crown. And it is screwed down. Then you see it pop out. Whereas the Seiko isn't and hasn't been signed. It's not screwed down or anything. But the pushers on the Seiko do have this, let's zoom in a little bit there, do have this outer portion to them, which does look better than on the Enduro timer there. So it does win back points there. As for the bracelet, the bracelet on this, I would say is its weak spot. It's not the best bracelet. It's fully functional. It does what it says on the tin, but it's not the best bracelet um, at all. It feels it doesn't feel the best. Where the Seiko bracelet, even though I, I'm not a fan of the end links, it's a nice bracelet. It's a really well done bracelet, as you'd expect. No problems with it there at all. The clasp, on the other hand, is a very nice, more of a dress watch style. Very slim, um, but only two levels of micro adjustment still got stickers on this so it is actually nice whereas the enduro here has this bigger class with multiple levels of um, micro adjustment and a keeper which has been signed but as i say it's not really the strong point of the watch the back of the watch on the other hand is quite nice they've done a real nice job on that no problem at all there i think it is nice the Seiko on the other hand, let's have a look, is just um, very simple, but you know, does its job. I personally prefer the one on that watch. I think it's just a little bit more interesting, but let's face it, you don't actually see that. So I'll put them both on my wrist so you've got an idea how they look. Let's zoom out again. Sorry, quick wrist check. I'm wearing my Dwist R2, which is up for sale and Bob's wearing the, well, sporting his, uh, what is it, he's an M13. So I'll put this on first, so it hasn't been sized for my wrist. I've got a seven and a quarter inch wrist, so I'll just wear it loose for now, and you get the idea how it looks. It's a cracking looking watch, no ifs or buts. So there you go. And if I wear the, this one, there you go. So it really is horses for courses, which one you actually prefer. But this is almost half the price of the Seiko. So it's kind of an interesting one really. Is this worth the almost 600 pounds? It's kind of up to you. But I say, neither watch is bad. It's just personal taste. But let me know in the comments below which one you actually prefer. Again, all the best and stay safe out there guys. Bye.